The story starts with Rain being called by his adventuring group. Suddenly the leader of his group told Rain that he is fired. Then we see wolves running towards Rain. Rain is a beast tamer, and his class is used to enter into contracts with various animals. They are not particularly useful in combat, however Rain was accepted into a hero's party. He tried to support his adventuring party every day and thought he had earned their trust. Back in the present, Rain was confused, and he thought they were just joking. Alios got angry and he said that they are not kidding. Everyone looked down on Rain, and they didn't want Rain in their group anymore. Suddenly, Lean laughed and she said that he is useless. Alios told him that they no longer wanted to protect him. In addition, he said that other than carrying their luggage, he did not contribute anything to their success. Rain was shocked, and he couldn't believe that they all hate him. Rain didn't know what to do anymore, and they said that he should return his equipment because they collected the items. After being kicked out of his party, he remembered how useless he always was. Rain was always protected by the others and understood that they looked down on him all the time. He couldn't believe he didn't notice it sooner and was disappointed in them. When he didn't know what to do anymore, the children showed up and they wanted to play with him. As a result, Rain showed them his tamer skills. After Rain tamed a falcon in the sky, he told the bird to greet them. The children thought Rain's trick was great and he cancelled the familiar contract and the bird flew away. Suddenly a boy said that he wanted to become a beast tamer. Rain was surprised and asked why they didn't want to become a hero. The boy said that the hero's party are mean and rude. Then the children said that Rain is nice and they like him. They all wanted to become beast tamers and get rich as adventurers. Following this, he decided to become an adventurer and visited the Adventurer's Guild. Rain told Natalie that he had no knowledge about the life of an adventurer and Natalie explained to Rain everything that he needs to live as an adventurer. So Rain thanked her for the great explanation and Natalie asked about his class. Rain replied that he is a beast tamer and the question made Rain remember Lean's words. We then see Rain completing a test to register as an adventurer. Natalie told him beforehand that everyone had to take a test because bad adventurers could damage the guild's reputation. Then we see Rain again. He was hunting goblins and managed to successfully defeat them. Rain used all of his techniques and was able to defeat the goblins. He then thanked a squirrel for supporting him. As he wanted to go back to the guild with the item drops, Rain heard a scream. Rain ran into the forest and he spotted a huge killer tiger. The D-rank monster planned to attack a girl, but Rain tried to save her with a knife. He attacked the killer tiger, but his sword immediately broke. The killer tiger then decided to attack Rain. Rain said that the girl should run away immediately, and he wanted to sacrifice his life. Rain tried to buy enough time for the girl to escape. The girl didn't run away and she jumped into the air. Then she prepared a strong attack and she defeated the strong monster with just one kick. Rain was impressed and he was enchanted by the sight of her. He then immediately noticed that the rescued person belongs to the ultimate species in the world. Rain was surprised to see one of the rarest species, a cat spirit. Suddenly Canada got tired and Rain was able to catch her in time. He was worried about the girl, and she whispered in his ear that she was hungry. Rain was confused, and he gave her his lunch. Then we learn that cat spirits cannot use magic, but they have strong physical strength that no one can keep up with. After lunch, Canada thanked him and said that she had already seen her grandparents by a river. Then Rain learned about her name, and he introduced himself, and he said that he is an adventurer. Canada wanted to be friends with Rain, and she thanked him for saving her. Following this, Rain asked why she was in the forest. Canada then explained that there are only a few cat spirits in the world and they live secluded lives in the mountains. She said she wanted to see the world and she was happy to have met Rain. Afterwards, Canada wanted to learn more about Rain because she got a liking on him. This is how Canada found out that Rain had been fired from a hero party. Canada was angry that they fired Rain even though he's such a nice person. Canada was frustrated, but Rain said he wasn't sad anymore. Then he thanked Canada and she was happy to be petted by Rain. Suddenly Canada said that Rain is not weak and she complimented him. Then she suggested that Rain should enter into a familiar pact with her. Canada said that she is sure that Rain will be able to tame her as his familiar. Rain was unsure, but Canada encouraged him. Afterwards, Rain remembered his helplessness in his childhood and was determined to gain new strength with Canada by his side. He suddenly realized that he doesn't care about Canada's new power because his true desire is to get to know her better. As a result, Rain launched an attempt to tame Canada. He created a blood pact and created a contract that binds Canada to him. So Canada was tamed by Rain's beast tamer skills and she accepted the contract. Canada became Rain's partner. Following this, Rain said that the contract was a complete success 
and Canada was happy to see her familiar contract on her hand. Rain said he's looking forward to having fun adventures with her. Canada was happy too, and Rain realized that he had a great and nice ultimate species at his side. Before they returned to the guild, Rain had to complete his adventurous test. Then Rain tamed a cute bunny, and he was ordered to call his friends. As a result, Rain tamed many fluffy bunnies and they helped Rain find the medicinal herbs. All the rabbits spread out on the field and Canada was shocked. She said that normally Beast Tamer can only tame one partner, but none could create multiple packs. She asked where he learned such abnormal Beast Tamer skills. Rain didn't know that he was unique and said that every Beast Tamer could definitely make multiple packs. A few hours later, he handed over the drops that he had collected and he passed his entrance exam to become an adventurer. Natalie congratulated him as the new adventurer of the Horizon Guild. Rain also received a small reward, and Natalie motivated him. Meanwhile, Canada was waiting for Rain, and she was happy that Rain is now an official adventurer. Then Rain said that he wanted to start a quest immediately, but a man appeared. He looked at Canada and was amazed to see a cat spirit. Suddenly he started harassing Canada, and she refused to answer him. Then he called Rain a weakling, and Canada became very angry. She said that Rain is her master because he tamed her. So Rain introduced himself as Beast Tamer, and the other adventurer laughed at him. He said that God spirits are far too powerful to be tamed by a weak beast tamer. As a result, the man wanted to challenge Rain to arm wrestling. Rain didn't mind that the man looked down on him, but he wanted to protect Canada. So Rain accepted the challenge and he planned to win. The arrogant adventurer thought he had already won. When their match started, Rain immediately defeated him. Suddenly Natalie appeared and she apologized for the adventurer. The adventurer was injured and he pulled on Natalie's dress so she hit him with a table. She said that she had lost her temper because of the adventurer and apologized for scaring them. Afterwards, Rain was surprised at his new abilities, and Canada explained to him that he had received them because of their familiar pact. Rain was surprised and replied that he didn't know about it because no one had ever tamed an ultimate species before. Following this, Canada collected medicinal herbs, and she was depressed because she had imagined the adventurer's life differently. Rain told her that he is an F-rank adventurer and he needs to gain experience first. Meanwhile, the bunnies collected enough medicinal herbs and Canada was shocked. She couldn't believe he was already done even though she had barely helped him. Then the rabbits looked down on her and she got angry. Rain planned to return to the guild, but Canada heard a scream. Then we see a group of bandits threatening an old man. Canada heard rumors about a famous group of robbers and said that they are dangerous. Seeing the bandits threatening the old man, Rain wanted to help him. Canada was glad that Rain got the same idea, and she planned to support him in the fight. Then they launched their attack, and together they defeated the bandits. Canada managed to save the old man, and she was aware that Rain is a special beast tamer. Before the fight started, she was afraid that her powers were too powerful and that Rain's body would break apart. But during Rain's fight, she was happy that Rain could control her powers. She couldn't stop staring at him, and her heart was pounding with excitement. After Rain defeated all the bandits, Canada blushed. Following this, Canada said that she saved the man, and Rain didn't notice that she got a crush on him. Afterwards, the old man thanked him for his rescue, and Rain learned that his escort had run away. The old man then became worried that the bandits would want revenge on Rain. So Rain decided to capture the remaining group of bandits. Canada was worried about him since the bandits were a group with more than 100 members. But Rain told her that he got a plan, and a squirrel then found the bandits' hiding place. Canada was frustrated because she was no help to Rain again. Rain tried to cheer her up and she laughed because it was just a joke. Then Rain showed her a bee. Rain told her that he once learned to tame insects. This is how Canada learned that there are also insect tamers, who are a subclass of beast tamers. Canada was impressed again because Rain is special. After that, Rain ordered her to go to the city to get help, and she was worried about Rain. Then Canada wished him good luck, and she went back to the city. Following this Rain tamed hundreds of bees at once and he planned to start his attack. In the meantime, we see Lean and Mina from the hero group, who had the job of protecting the old man. They ran away, and they were angry that Alios didn't come with them. Also, Lean was angry because their new beast tamer is useless. He replied that he doesn't fight because he's just a beast tamer. Lean said that even the useless Rain tried to fight. Meanwhile, Rain attacks the bandits with hundreds of bees. Lean was surprised to learn that Rain is a special beast tamer. But Lean thought that the new beast tamer was a liar and didn't believe him, and she said that she will kill him if he tells someone about their failed quest. Lean was angry, and she didn't want to accept that Rain was overpowered. 
Then we see Rain and he managed to paralyze all the bandits with his bees. A short time later, Canada showed up with reinforcements, and the adventurers praised him. The adventurers told him that the knights didn't want to help them. Following this he praised Canada for her good work, and she was happy about his words. Suddenly the ground shook, and strong monsters appeared. Rain was shocked to see the king lizards. The arrogant bandits planned to control the king lizards, but they immediately attacked the bandits. So Rain and Canada started to beat up the king lizards so that they wouldn't hurt any more people. Rain said that the adventurers should get everyone to safety. When Rain faced the monsters, he realized that he is now strong. He was happy to have met Canada and fought the monsters with her. As a result, they attacked together. Later we see the adventurers hoping that Rain and Canada aren't hurt. Suddenly Canada and Rain came out of the cave and everyone celebrated their victory. In that moment, he realized that he wasn't useless and he looked forward to his time together with Canada. Rain thanked her and said that he can do anything with her by his side. In the evening, Canada was happy to sleep in a soft bed again after a long time. Meanwhile, Rain was nervous about being allowed to sleep in the same room as Canada. Then we see some time before, because the bandit group was arrested. Rain was praised by Natalie and he was promoted to an E-rank adventurer. They also got money, and he learned that there was only one room left in the inn. Then he was taken to the free room with Canada, and Rain was very nervous about sleeping in the same room with a cute girl. Suddenly, he wanted to sleep outside, but Canada stopped him. Rain said he was a man, but Canada liked Rain and said she had nothing to fear from him. Then Rain tried to teach Canada that she shouldn't just trust strangers right away because it's dangerous. Canada was sad and said that she doesn't trust everyone. Additionally, she said that she only trusts Rain because they are friends. Canada managed to change Rain's decision, so Rain decided to sleep in the same room with Canada. In the middle of the night, Canada looked at Rain, and she thought that Rain was really cute while sleeping. Canada was happy to have met such a nice person because she is also rare among the ultimate species. She was very lonely and couldn't trust anyone. Then she met Rain, who wanted to help her without any bad intentions. Canada knew about his trust issues, and she planned to help Rain overcome his past so he could be happy. One week later, we see Rain with Canada, and they were enjoying their time together as adventurers. Rain had a lot of fun with Canada, and they went to the guild. At the guild, they learned about a villain who beats up the people on the stride bridge. Natalie asked Rain to accept the quest, and she told him about a big reward. Two hours later, they arrived at the stride bridge, and they were looking for the villain called Guard Dog. Rain suddenly wondered why none of the strong adventurers wanted to talk about the villain. After that, Canada looked at the sky and they discovered a huge dragon flying over the bridge. The dragon descended onto the bridge and revealed its true form. Then a dragon girl challenged Rain and Canada to a fight. Rain was surprised and asked if she is the guard dog. The dragon girl was then introduced as Tanya, who belongs to the ultimate species. Afterwards, Tanya said that she is looking for strong opponents for her special training. Rain was unsure if they could defeat a dragon, but Canada encouraged him. Then their fight began, and Rain was attacked. Rain blocked Tanya's attack, but he was immediately pushed back. Tanya was impressed by Rain, and she attacked the two with her fire breath. Rain dodged her breath of fire, but Canada was hit by the fire. She was angry at Tanya, and she launched her attack. Tanya blocked the attack, and they fought each other with their fists. Rain wanted to support her, and also attacked Tanya. Tanya managed to block both attacks and launched another attack. Suddenly Tanya concentrated all her strength and she shot a huge fire attack at the two. Rain and Canada managed to get out of the way in time. As a result, Tanya was impressed by the two of them. Suddenly Rain had an idea to defeat Tanya and he ordered Canada to buy him some time. Tanya was attacked with the cat spirit Gatlings and Canada said that Rain will defeat her. Following this, Rain tried to find a bird, and he discovered one behind the bridge after using his overpowered Google Maps skills. Rain used his overpowered beast taming skills, and he caught a bird that will lead him to victory. Afterwards, Rain told Canada that he was now starting his attack. Tanya was surrounded and attacked by a group of birds. Suddenly Tanya no longer had any strength in her legs. Rain explained to her that the birds that paralyzed her body were poisonous. Tanya gave up the fight and Rain won with Canada. Then Rain asked if Tanya would like to accompany him. Tanya looked at his face and she could sense that Rain is a good person. After this Canada teased Tanya and she said that bad girls need to be punished. A few hours later at the guild, Rain reported to Natalie that he had defeated the guard dog. Suddenly Natalie asked about Tanya and Rain told her that she is just a friend. Tanya was a proud dragon and she almost revealed her true identity to Natalie. 
Rain then tried to explain the situation to her, but she only caused problems. So they went out of town, and Rain asked her not to reveal her true identity as a dragon to anyone. After that, Rain told Tanya that she is free, and that she should not attack any adventurers in the future. Following this, Tanya decided to accompany Rain, and she asked him for permission to join his group. They were surprised about her decision, but Rain didn't think her idea was bad. As a result, Tanya was accepted into Rain's group, and she wanted to be tamed by Rain too. A short time later, Rain activated his overpowered beast taming skills, and he prepared the contract. Rain casted his spell and he created a strong magic circle that connected his mana with Tanya's. Tanya also received a pattern on her hand. She was happy to be connected to Rain. She looked forward to having a good time with him, and she welcomed him as her new master. In the evening, we see Alios's hero party. They were depressed because their mission failed without Rain. Suddenly, Alios suggested bringing Rain back into their party. He thought that a weakling like Rain would immediately beg on his knees to be accepted back into the party. Meanwhile, the two girls were arguing because they both wanted to sleep next to Rain. In the next day, Rain got the quest to hunt down slimes and his girls helped him by his mission. The reason for this was that slimes are F-rank monsters and many adventurers ignore them. As a result, the farmer's fields are destroyed and Canada didn't like slimes because they are very sticky. Meanwhile, Rain looked at the girls and he was happy that they are getting along. A short time later, Rain used his beast tamer skills to find the slime monsters. Suddenly the birds started to talk and Rain explained to them that he had sent part of his soul into the bird. As a result, he gained control over the bird's body and the girls were shocked to find out about his weird ability. Following this, Rain discovered a group of hundreds of slimes playing around in the forest. Tanya asked Rain if he can use magic and he said he can cast a weak fireball spell. Suddenly Tanya said that he should try to shoot a fireball at the slimes. He didn't think his magic was strong enough, but he trusted Tanya and concentrated his mana. Then Rain shot a fireball, and it caused a huge explosion. Tanya explained to him that he had gained enormous physical strength through the contract with Canada. He also had gained the powers of a dragon, and Rain was confused by the theory. Then a group of slimes appeared, and he was told to practice his magic on the monsters to gain control about his new power. Rain didn't want to be a burden for his girls, and he decided to train his powers. Rain didn't want to be a burden to his girls, and he decided to practice his magic power under the leadership of Tanya. After finishing their mission, they returned to the Adventurer's Guild, and a little girl asked what they had done. They said that the fields were free of slimes now, and the little girl was happy. In the afternoon, Rain went shopping with the girls, and they had a lot of fun together. At dinner, he learned that ultimate species can eat a lot. The girls managed to eat countless dishes, and Rain thanked Tanya for showing him how to control his magic. After this, the girls wanted to know where he had learned beast taming. Rain told them about his story, that he comes from a village where many beast tamers lived. He told them that his parents and friends taught him to learn beast taming. Unfortunately, his village no longer existed and Canada felt sorry for Rain. He said she didn't have to worry, but the two girls said that if he didn't want to talk about it, he didn't have to share his story with them. Rain knew he could trust the two girls, and he told them his story. Following this, Rain said that his parents were often busy, and for this reason he practiced beast taming alone. One evening he saw that the sky was red and he ran back to the village. When he arrived, the whole village had burned down and he could no longer help them. Rain was the only survivor and an adventurer took him into custody. A few years passed and one day he encountered Alios's hero party. Rain said that he was invited to his party and he accepted his offer to join the hero's party. The reason was that he thought he could prevent the tragedies he had experienced. Unfortunately, he was wrong and the reality was different than he thought. Canada noticed that Rain was shaking, and she said she wondered why did he always rush first into danger. She was glad that she knew that Rain always reacts like that, because he always tries to help other people first, before thinking about himself. Rain was cheered up by his girls, and they said that he is a great master who they love. Tanya and Canada wanted to punish the hero's party, but Rain said that he is not angry. In the days that followed, Rain and his girls went hunting orcs, and Canada challenged Tanya to a competition. Tanya defeated many monsters, and Rain knew that orcs were weaker than goblins, but much smarter. After the battle, he warned his girls not to let their guard down, but Tanya didn't believe that an orc could ever defeat her. Then they hunted more orcs, and Tanya and Canada managed to defeat many of them. Tanya discovered that an orc had survived, and she let her guard down. So she was lured into an orc's trap, and an orc planned to attack her from behind. Rain protected Tanya, and he was injured on his arm by an orc with a knife. 
Following this, Rain planned to collect the rune stones, but Tanya couldn't forgive herself for putting Rain in danger. Later, Rain got his reward and he learned that Tanya seemed a little down. Tanya was ashamed of her mistake and a little girl wanted to know what they had defeated today. Then the little girl noticed that Tanya was sad and she thought that she had hurt herself. After talking to the little girl, Tanya thought about her words. She understood that Rain was warning her not to let her guard down because he was worried about her. However, Tanya was ashamed to look Rain in the eyes, but he appeared behind her. She apologized for not listening to his advice. He replied that he and Canada were glad nothing happened to her. Afterwards, they returned to the inn, and Tanya couldn't stop thinking about Rain. Tanya was watching him sleeping, and she had never met such a nice person before. At that moment, she realized that she got a crush on him. She was surprised by her feelings, even though she has only known Rain for a short time, but she decided to be by his side forever. Several days passed, and Tanya suggested to Rain that he should buy new equipment. Canada was hungry, and Rain promised they would go for lunch first. Suddenly, Rain stopped to move because he was shocked after seeing his old party members in front of him. Following this, Rain tried to ignore his old party, but Alios insulted him, and he was called weak. Tanya told Alios to stop talking nonsense about Rain, and he realized that Rain had two ultimate species on his side. They learned that they are Rain's comrades, and Canada was angry because the hero's party thought that Rain was their servant. After this, Rain was asked if he remembered his last mission in the Lost Woods. Alios said they couldn't reach the end of the forest because the place regularly changed its paths. Suddenly, Rain was asked to help the hero's party and Alios looked down on him. The members of the hero's party said that he should be honored to contribute to the hero's party. Rain refused to help them, and he planned to go back to town. Before he left, Mina told him that in the Lost Wood lies one of the noble relics that is needed to defeat the Demon King. He was surprised to hear about the noble relics and learned that without the magic items, the hero party would not be able to destroy the Demon King. He didn't want innocent people to get hurt and suffer the same fate as he did in his childhood. As a result, he decided to help Alios and his old comrades. Suddenly, Canada and Tanya stopped the bullies. Canada said that they will accompany Rain to the Lost Wood, but they have to apologize to Rain for their mean words. Alios had no intention of apologizing, but Tanya threatened them and said that she could kill everyone with her breath of fire. Then Alios said he should train his pets, and he insulted his girls. He continued to look down on Rain, and he made Rain angry. As a result, Rain punched Alios in the face for insulting his girls. Alios couldn't believe he was beaten by a weak beast tamer, but Rain was furious after his girls was insulted. He was challenged to a fight against the hero's party, and Rain accepted his challenge. So the two groups set off to the forest and they prepared for the fight against each other. Canada was angry because Agath insulted Rain and she launched her attack. As a result, Agath was attacked and he was shocked about the overwhelming power of a cat spirit. He didn't give up and planned to defeat Canada with his secret technique, but she deflected it. Canada looked down on her opponent and she said that a little baby would be more powerful as him. However, Agath didn't want to admit that he has no chance against her and said that he hasn't gotten serious yet. He said that he will be serious, and Canada replied that she will unleash about half of her power. At that moment, Agath realized that he was going to die, and he hoped that she was just lying. As a result, Agath was defeated, and Canada realized that she had overdid it a little. Tanya learned that she will fighting against the two girls of the heroes group. They underestimated Tanya, and they started to cast strong spell against her, but Tanya made their magic disappear. Following this, Lean planned to launch a second try, and she was sure that they will win. Tanya did her trick again, and she explained them, that she was able to cancel their magic spells. However, they learned that they got no chance against a Dragonoid, but their pride were hurt. They didn't want to accept that they lost, and Tanya said that Rain is the strongest person. After this, they tried a last time to defeat Tanya, but they learned that Tanya just played with them. In addition, she said that she will show them a magic of a goddess, and she started to cast a powerful spell. Her opponents were desperate, and they asked for forgiveness because they didn't want to die. In the last moment, Tanya stopped her spell, and she said that they shouldn't take a mere bluff so seriously. In the meantime, Alios told Rain that he got no chance to win the fight, but Rain started to attack him. Rain said he should stop talking, and his opponent started to launch his counterattack with his sword. Rain realized that his enemy is very fast and strong, but he managed to dodge all of his attacks. At that moment he realized that none of his attacks felt even remotely like Tanya's dangerous fire attacks. Rain stopped Alios and he punched him in the stomach. 
His opponent was shocked and wondered how a weak beast tamer could become an overpowered monster. Rain then explained to him that this is the true power of a beast tamer, and that his attacks cannot hit him because he has always watched them fight. Because of this, he knew all of his opponent's weak points, and he told Elios that he got no chance to win anymore. Suddenly Elios started to laugh, and he said that he will defeat him with the hero's special magic. Rain countered his attack with a fireball, and his enemy was surprised about his trick. Alios started to cast more powerful spells, but Rain managed to dodge all of his attacks, and he thought about a plan to win the fight. Before Alice could end the fight, he felt that his body was numb. The reason for this was that Rain used his beast tamer skills to win the battle. After that, he said that he is still quite angry over how he mocked his girls. Rain didn't spare him, and he knocked him out with a powerful punch. After the fight, his girls showed up, and they celebrated the victory against the hero's party. A few hours later, they reached the place called Lost Wood, and Tanya planned to burn down the dark forest. Rain stopped her and he told them that they needs to find the Shield of Truth, which only the hero can wield. After this, he looked at the map, and he noticed that the map, which was given by Alios, is totally useless. Then we see a few hours earlier, when the hero's party apologized to Rain. He forgave them, and planned to help them find the Shield of Truth. Alios started to insult him again, and Rain tried to calm his girls down. Back in the present, the girls said they didn't want to help Alios, and Tanya said she could defeat the Demon King on her own. Rain understood that they were worried about him, and he thanked them for being on his side. Then Canada and Tanya said that they will support him on his mission to find the shield and Rain tamed a little bird. He used his beast tamer skills and tried to find a route to the deepest place of the forest. A short moment later, he woke up and Canada was motivated to find the legendary item. Then they walked on the path to the deepest place, but they realized that they were back where they started. Canada thought he had chosen the wrong path, but Tanya suspected there was something wrong with the forest. She cast her spell called Material Search, and a red light appeared. As a result, she found a magic tree that was emitting illusionary magic. Canada was confused, and Tanya began to explain it to her in different words. Then Canada was ordered to destroy the tree because it was protected by a powerful barrier. She tried to destroy the tree, but a scary voice stopped her from attacking the tree. Suddenly a fairy appeared, and Rain knew that she also belonged to the ultimate species. He knew that the magic of fairies is more powerful than that of a dragonoid. Additionally, the fairies detested humans, and they disappeared 200 years ago. Rain tried to talk with her, but she told him to leave this place. Suddenly, she threatened them with a strong spell, and they managed to escape. Canada thought that fairies were warm and welcoming species. Rain suspected that something was hidden behind the barrier, because fairies hadn't shown themselves to humans in 200 years. Then Tanya planned to destroy the barrier, but Rain told them that he will try to talk to her one more time. Canada and Tanya agreed to support him on his plan, and they weren't surprised about it. Following this, he went back, and Rain told the fairy that he wants to talk with her. He said that she can attack him, but she should avoid hurting his girls who were behind him. Suddenly, his girls tried to protect him, but he knew that this is the only way to win her trust. He remembered his beginnings as a beast tamer and knew this was the right decision. As a result, he let himself hit by the girls her powerful attack, and she wondered why he wasn't running away. She understood that Rain wasn't an evil guy like the other humans, who burned down her home 200 years ago. Unfortunately, Rain failed to gain her trust and he was attacked again. But his girls protected him. They said that they can't allow Rain to be hurt, and Canada tried to convince the fairy that Rain is a nice person. However, they managed to convince the fairy to trust Rain, and she was willing to listen to his words. Sora learned that he seek the Shield of Truth in that hero's stead, but the barrier was holding their back. Then she told them that she can't take down the barrier, because it would open the way to the fairy village. Suddenly, Sora teleported away, and she was able to get the Shield of Truth without destroying the barrier. Rain was surprised that it was easier than expected, and he planned to return the favor for her. She didn't ask Rain to do anything, and he noticed that Sora seemed kind of sad. Before they went back, Rain asked Sora if there was anything there that bothered her. She wanted to tell him the truth, but she was afraid of putting Rain in danger, but Rain really wanted to help her. They convinced Sora to reveal them the truth, and she decided to tell them her story. Following this, they learned that Sora had a little sister, who was very precious to her. Together, they protected the barrier that led to the fairy village, but one day, they sensed that something was wrong in the forest, so they decided to leave the lost wood, and they encountered a monster, 
who worked for the army of the Demon King. They tried to defeat him, but their magic doesn't work, and her little sister Runa was captured. Rain heard rumors about a Shadow Knight and explained that it was able to nullify all magic attacks. Then the Shadow Knight ordered her to lower the barrier, but she refused to place her other comrades in danger. She reported the village chief about the incident, but he decided to abandon Runa. The reason was that he prioritizes the lives of all fairies over that of her sister. Rain couldn't abandon a crying girl, and he promised to save Runa. She was cheered up and cried tears of joy when she heard his words. So Rain planned to save Runa at all costs, and he was ready for the fight. Then Sora said that she was asked to remove the barrier before sundown of that day, otherwise her sister will die. Rain told her she should wait for their return, and Sora entrusted them to save Runa. After that, they found Sora's sister, and they planned to start their attack to save Runa. However, Rain cast his fireball spell and started to attack the Shadow Knight. Their enemy was distracted and they started to use physical attacks against him. The Shadow Knight was surprised about their attacks and thought that Rain might be the hero. Suddenly the Shadow Knight planned to kill Runa, but Tanya deflected his attack. Tanya was praised by Rain and she was flattered by his words. After this, Canada and Rain began to attack the Shadow Knight together. Rain was surprised that the enemy could withstand their attacks. Suddenly the Shadow Knight began to launch a counterattack, and he created a strong storm. Rain told Canada that he will stop him, and he trusts Canada to defeat the opponent. Following this, Rain started activating his beast taming skills, and he tamed a group of bees. He started his attack, and planned to use the bees to distract the enemy for a short moment. As a result, his plan worked, and he told Canada that she can start the final blow. He cast a spell, and unleashed the true potential of a cat spirit. Following this, she ran towards the Shadow Knight, and she punched him with a powerful cat spirit punch. The enemy was shocked that he lost and his body disappeared. After that, Canada asked him about his spell, and he replied that it was a unique tamer spell. Then Tanya appeared, and she was surprised too, because his boost spell was a lost spell. Canada said that they have to win their victory, and she showed them her victory pose. Suddenly Runa woke up, and Rain told her that her sister asked them to save her. A few hours later, they were able to reunite Runa with her sister, and Sora thanked them for rescuing Runa. Suddenly Sora began to tease Rain, and he was surprised that the two of them looks exactly alike, but their personalities are completely different. Canada said they could live together again from now on, but they didn't want to live in that place anymore. Rain said that they have to be careful because the forest is dangerous. Suddenly Canada asked if they wanted to join their party. The two fairy twins replied that they trust Rain and would like to join his party. In addition, they said that they also want to do a familiar contract with Rain. He was surprised and wondered if he was capable of taming fairies. Tanya said he could do it, and he wanted to try making a contract with fairies. However, Rain tried to form a contract and he thought about a structure to tame magical beasts. He was started to activate his beast taming spell and created a magic circle. In that moment the fairy twins accepted his contract, and they became his new familiars. They were happy that it worked, but Rain was out of mana because he had tamed two ultimate species in the same time. Suddenly Tanya and Canada realized that they have new rivals who could seduce Rain. Later, Rain met with Alios and his girls were worried because the hero Alios treated their master like scum. They were surprised that Rain found the shield within two days, even though they failed after a week. Then Mina checked the shield and the hero party was shocked that it wasn't a fake shield. Alios spotted the twins, but Rain replied that it wasn't his business. He received his money and was glad that he won't have to deal with them ever again. Suddenly Agath stopped him and asked Rain if he would like to return to the party. Alios was against the idea, but Agath explained him the reasons for his offer. The other members agreed with him, and they didn't deny that they needed Rain in their party. Agath said he would treat them well when they worked together again, but he couldn't forgive them. In that moment, his girl showed up, and Canada told him that they were all waiting for him. He turned the offer down, and he decided to enjoy his life with his four cute girls. Then they started gossiping about Rain, and Alios was deep in thought. The reason for this was that he hated Rain because Rain was strong enough to defeat him. Later the girls wondered if the Demon King could really only be defeated by the hero. He told them about the story that in the past a guy received the powers of the gods and saved humanity. As a result, he was known as the legendary hero, and he said that only the hero can surpass his limits. Canada said that Alios was very weak, but Rain replied that he would eventually get stronger. Runa thought that he was also like a hero because he became stronger after making a contract with them. Suddenly, 
Canada said that Rain just needed to tame more ultimate species, and then he could defeat the Demon King. His girls believed that Rain would be able to defeat the Demon King. Then he realized that he never had the goal of defeating the Demon King because he was always weak. He said that he would like to defeat the Demon King, but he knows that he is still too weak for the task. However, he said that he might think about it and that he would like to spend time with his sweet girls until then. Canada replied that she will always support him and he asked himself what path he should choose. Meanwhile, Alios was angry and he planned to kill Rain because his pride was hurt. In the days that followed, Rain woke up. He noticed that all his girls were sleeping peacefully and was almost hit by Tanya. Then they had breakfast together and Tanya said that he needed new equipment. Rain thought the idea was great and he planned to have a nice day with his girls. After breakfast they went into town and he learned that the twins were afraid of the townspeople. Suddenly adventurers appeared and they worshipped Tanya because they were defeated by her in battle. Meanwhile, Canada was given an apple for helping a nice woman a few days earlier. After that, some children's appeared and they were surprised that Rain got more wives. Runa blushed and she thanked her for the compliment, calling them both pretty. Suddenly Sora planned to show the children some magic tricks but Rain stopped her. She was angry and Runa said that she can't use any magic or her fairy wings will appear. Following this, they entered the best weapon shop in the city. Rain told Gantz that he was looking for a weapon. Rain looked around the shop and Sora said that a whip was the perfect weapon. She imagined perverted things and she teased her little sister. As a result, Sora was beaten up by her and she apologized to her. Later he found a dagger and he felt something was wrong with the weapon. Meanwhile, an adventurer appeared and asked for a strong sword. The owner brought him one of his forged swords and Rain knew he was being scammed. But the adventurer didn't notice that he was scammed and he left the weapon shop with a smile. Rain doubted the blacksmith and he said that the swords in his shop somehow seemed weak. He asked if the owner had a secret and the shop owner started laughing. Then he told them that he made the weapons in his spare time, but they are not suitable for combat. The reason for this was that he was just waiting for someone to notice it, and he showed Rain the real weapons that he pour his heart into it. He said he shows the poorly made weapons to see if anyone is worthy of his weapons. However, Rain learned that many new adventurers don't value his work, and because of this, he no longer sells his treasures to just anyone. Tanya understood his feelings, and they became instant friends. A short time later, Rain was asked how he noticed that the weapons were different. He replied that he is a beast tamer and perhaps noticed the difference for these reasons. Gantz was impressed with Rain, and his girl said that Rain is not your average beast tamer. He liked him, and he promised that he will make him a personalized weapon. Afterwards, they went to the Adventurer Guild and learned that Alios was looking for a new member for his party. Tanya and Canada noticed that Rain was getting sad, and he was grateful that they cared about him. He said he was fine, and the twins were jealous. Afterwards, Natalie met Sora and Runa, but Sora caused problems for Rain. Rain tried to clear up the misunderstanding and explained that Sora was just kidding. After that he showed Natalie the request to find Mithril ore for the weapon Smith Gantz. He asked them to find Mithril, because he planned to forge him a strong weapon. Unfortunately, there was a lack of the rare material because many adventurers mined it to make iced-out watches. Tanya guessed that Rain planned to help Gantz, and she said that she will support him to investigate the mithril mine. The other girls also wanted to support him, and he planned to investigate why no more mithril could be found in the mine. At that moment, Gantz began to like him even more, and he accepted his offer to investigate the case. Also, he asked Rain how much he charges, and he asked him to forge him a personalized weapon. Gantz loved his idea, and he was smiling. A few hours later, they were on the way to the mithril mine, and Canada was motivated to help him. Then they learned that Runa and Sora had absolutely no athletic abilities. However, Rain used his beast taming skills and found a lake to take a break with his girls. They wanted to go swimming, and everyone asked what he thought of the idea. So Rain replied that they can go swimming, and Canada began to undress in front of him. Rain looked after the luggage, and he tamed two squirrels. As a result, they were ordered to watch the girls so he could take a nap. In the meantime, the girls were enjoying their bath and the twins were jealous of Tanya and Canada's big boobs. Suddenly Sora asked if Canada could teach her that hers grow that big too. Afterwards the girls played in the water and Canada was bitten by a fish. Rain heard their scream and he immediately ran to them. As a result, he saw the girls naked and he was confused because he thought they were being attacked. He said sorry and the girls were shocked that Rain saw them all naked. Then Rain said that he will do anything to earn their forgiveness. Tanya and Canada had a great idea, and they said that he should continue to behave normally, 
They knew Rain was just worried about them, and that's why they weren't mad at him. A few hours later, they arrived at the Mithril Mine to find out the reason why the Mithril disappeared. Rain noticed an eagle flying around them and some guys appeared out of the Mithril Mine. Rain said they had to catch the guys, but Tanya and Canada knocked the two persons out. Suddenly Runa asked him if he would like to use her magic to peer into his memories. He was surprised by the twins' abilities and they began to cast the spell Memory Search. As a result, she could see that a bunch of adventurers were responsible for the Mithril's disappearance. Runa and Sora wanted that Rain pat their head as a reward. Then he started to pat the twins and his other girls were jealous. Following this he told his girls to get ready because he planned to enter the mine. He told them that his enemies are watching them and one of them is most likely a beast tamer. Inside the Mithril Mine, the thieves were alerted that their comrades were defeat by an unknown group. Suddenly they were ambushed by four adventurers, but Runa and Sora cast a spell to absorb their fireball. The thieves tried to attack them again, but the twins used a counter spell. As a result, they extinguished their spells. Following this, Tanya and Canada defeated the other members of their group. They caught the thieves, and Canada was sure that Rain will win against their leader. His enemy lost instantly, and he used his beast-taming skills to call a strong monster. Suddenly, a dangerous B-rank monster named Behemoth appeared. Despite being a difficult monster to tame, the beast-tamer boasted that he raised it from his childhood, which circumvented the prerequisites of taming it. Rain was attacked, and Behemoth causes the mind to shake and crumble. Canada understood what Rain wanted to tell her, and she planned to take the captured thieves outside for their safety. The twins were worried about Rain, but he told them to leave the cave. Following this, Tanya said that she will watch the thieves, and Canada was on the way to assist Rain. Rain was injured, but in the last moment Canada saved her future husband. She told him that Tanya was watching over the thieves, and Rain told her the plan to win the battle. However, their enemy was angry, and he said that they will die in the cave. Behemoth attacked Rain, and he noticed that the mine won't hold out much longer. Then Rain decided to attack Behemoth with a fireball spell, but his spell doesn't work. Canada told her master that she caught the beast tamer, and he refused to surrender. Suddenly, he activated his spell to make Behemoth even angrier. Rain recalled the words of Canada, and he decided to trust in his own powers. As a result, Rain was able to stop Behemoth, and Rain transferred control of Behemoth to his own. So Behemoth started listening to Rain, and stopped attacking him. The thief was shocked that Rain was able to take away his control of Behemoth. He said that normally it wouldn't be possible, and Canada admired him. Behemoth's old master yelled at him, and Behemoth started to attacking his old master, but Rain casted a strong fireball spell to save the thief. However, Rain managed to defeat Behemoth and explained the reason why Behemoth attacked his old master. Rain became sad when he realized that he had to kill an innocent monster because of his own master's mistakes. Later they learned that the thieves wanted revenge on Gantz because they found out they were scammed. Gantz realized he shouldn't have scammed the adventurers. He regretted it and was ashamed of it. Suddenly Rain said that everyone makes mistakes and he was sure that he won't make the same mistake again. So Gantz was cheered up and he asked Rain which weapon he would like. Rain had a great idea and whispered in his ear what function it should have. So he asked Gantz to forge him a strong S-rank gauntlet for the fight. In the evening, a beast tamer applied to the hero's party and was rejected. Alios looked down on him, but the suitor was convinced that he was useful. Suddenly Alios asked if he was able to tame ultimate species, and he replied that it was impossible. Mina knew that many applicants were competent, but she knew that no one could replace Rain. She knew that they wouldn't find a beast tamer again with overpowered skills like Rain. However, she asked Alios if the criteria for his selection were too strict, but he became angry at her. Unfortunately, their mission to defeat the Demon King could not proceed without Alios, and she apologized to him for her rudeness. Before she left, she reminded him of his mission to save the world, but all he thought about was his revenge on Rain. He was looking at a ring, and he planned to eliminate Rain and his girls. The following morning he visited Natalie and learned that the ore thieves were arrested. He learned that they had committed major crimes and felt sorry for them. Runa and Sora noticed that Rain was sad and they were worried about him. As a result, Runa and Sora tried to cheer him up and he thanked them. He went shopping with the twins and his other two girls were still sleeping. Then they spotted a hot dog stand and Rain told them that his sausage was just that long. He bought them hot dogs and they ate it immediately. Rain noticed that the twins liked hot dogs and suggested visiting the hot dog stand again later with the others. Suddenly, Runa had an important question and she wanted to know what skills he gained through the contract with them. He didn't feel any change, 
and they hoped that maybe he had learned ultimate magic from them. He noticed that the girls were getting sad because he wasn't getting any new strength from them. So they made assumptions because they didn't want to feel useless. However, Rain tried to cheer them up, and they wanted to know why he put so much faith in them. The reason for their question was that he had saved them, and they were ashamed of having done nothing for him. Then Rain told them about the story that he was treated like scum by the hero's party. They learned of his sad story and were angry at the hero Alios. Following this, Rain said that after that day, he met true comrades. They learned the reason why he put so much faith in them. Suddenly they wanted to wake up the other girls to have breakfast, but an arrogant noble guy showed up. He asked the twins about their names and confessed his feelings to them. Suddenly, he told them that his nickname was Mr. Handsome and Sora was disgusted. They were scared of Eddie and he told them that he is the son of a lord who rules over Horizon. Runa and Sora refused to go with him, but Eddie sent his soldiers after them to get the twins. Rain was attacked by his guards, but he easily defeated them. Then he said that Eddie doesn't get his girls, but Eddie thought he was a top G. He refused to leave and took the innocent townspeople as hostage. Suddenly he said that they are all tools, and Rain didn't know how to save everyone at the same time. Runa and Sora asked Rain if they should use their magic, but he feared it would ruin their happy life. As a result, he tried to find another way, and he realized that he had mastered a powerful spell. He cast his multi-shot fireball, and the twins knew that it was a special skill of the fairies. Rain defeated Eddie. Before he left he said that Rain will regret fighting him. Meanwhile, his girls were happy that Rain had protected them and the other residents thanked him too. Out of nowhere, a old woman warned him and told him to leave the town with his friends instantly. Then we see Alios, who planned to use a ring that would cause chaos in the town horizon. Back at the inn, Runa said that Rain was able to use a killer move. He was surprised that he got a new magic skill. Following this, he told his girls about Eddie and they learned that he kidnapped women and treated them like toys. Tanya planned to punish him and she wanted to collect evidence to get him arrested. Rain wanted to protect the townspeople, but he knew he was just a normal beast tamer. Suddenly, Canada and Tanya said that he should also accept help from them. They knew that he intended to protect everyone alone and decided to support him in the fight. He was glad that his girls were on his side and they planned to protect the townspeople of Horizon. In the night, Eddie's father found out about his son's day, and he told that everything is fine. Eddie ordered Gilbert, the captain of the Knight's Order, to make sure no witnesses spoke. He gave Gilbert money and told him to investigate Rain. After this, he called a little girl into the room and she was used as a punching bag. She couldn't defend herself and she wanted someone to save her. In the following day, Rain visited the building of the Night Order. He planned to file a complaint and asked to investigate yesterday's incident at the plaza. Unfortunately, a group of knights showed up and they claimed that it was just a small fight. Rain already suspected that they were being paid by Eddie's family and a woman was eavesdropping them. He then told Canada that the Knight's Order was working for Eddie and Vice Captain of the Knight's Order, Stella showed up. Rain introduced herself and she told them that she felt useless because Rain had defeated bandits and they couldn't even protect the town horizon from their lord. For this reason, she asked Rain to work with her because most of the Order of Knights are rotten. She said her plan is to arrest Captain Gilbert and his comrades to make Horizon a safe place again. Canada trusted her and Rain decided to cooperate with Stella. They had the same goal, and Stella laughed when she heard about Rain's plan. She knew that Rain was a good person and cried tears of joy. Meanwhile, Rain was flattered and they planned to take down the bad guys together. Afterwards, Rain said that they should set a trap, and he told Stella about his plan. He also received his new weapon from Gantz, and the knights fell for his trap. In the night, many knights gathered in front of Eddie's father's mansion and they planned to start their mission. Gilbert heard rumors that Stella was planning something but he didn't want to allow the truth to be found out. However, he ordered his soldiers to be ready for battle, but they were attacked in the dark. The exit was blocked and all the knights were knocked out by Rain with his S-rank gauntlet. He said that his gauntlet is a collaboration between Nike and Gucci made by Gantz. As a result, he had the ultimate weapon and he attacked Gilbert. At the last moment, he fended off his sneaky attack and found out Rain's location. Stella said that he should give up and that they have collected enough evidence of his corruption but he had no intention of surrendering and wanted to get rid of Stella. She accepted the challenge, and Gilbert looked down on her for not choosing money like everyone else. So they fought each other, and Stella was overwhelmed by his attack. Then Gilbert said that justice doesn't exist in this world, and Stella remembered when Gilbert wasn't corrupt. 
She managed to defeat him with a sword blow and cried because he abused his power to protect criminals. Afterwards, they planned to arrest Eddie and his father to make Horizon a safe place. Meanwhile, Nina was beaten again by Eddie because he learned that evidence of his crime was being collected. Suddenly, Alios appeared and he said that he wanted to eliminate Rain too. He told Eddie that he has several ultimate species on his side. Also, he said that he has no chance in a fight against Rain. He gave him a magic item that contained a strong curse. Later, Nina remembered her peaceful life when she was surrounded by friendly people. After that, she was locked up and she wished every day for someone to save her. Meanwhile, Stella made her move and planned to inspect the Lord's estate for urgent reasons. She told the guards that Captain Gilbert was arrested, but his guards refused to let them enter the building. Canada and Tanya said that Stella would ensure security, but the guards called for reinforcements. So they were surrounded by the Lord's soldiers, and they began to fight. Eddie looked down on them, and he wasn't afraid of Rain's ultimate species, because he owned a cursed item. Then we see Rain, who had sneaked into the Lord's building. Runa activated her material search spell to find kidnapped people in the building. Suddenly, Runa reported that something was wrong because she had discovered a huge magic signature. She said that the person had unusually strong magical power and Rain suspected that it might be an ultimate species. Then he decided to find the ultimate species and said that the twins should find the kidnapped people. His girls were worried, but he calmed them down and apologized to them because his plan would reveal their secret. Runa said he didn't have to worry about her and they split up to find the kidnapped women. After this, Rain investigated where the magical signature came from. He discovered a room and was shocked to find an injured girl with a fox tail. At that moment he was sure that she was an ultimate species and he immediately opened the lock. Rain cast a healing spell on her and he said that he came to help her. Nina was happy that someone came to save her and jumped into Rain's arms. Then we see the day when Nina was kidnapped by Eddie. She refused to go with him, but Eddie was scum and took advantage of threatening to kill innocent children if she didn't go with him. Nina didn't want innocent people to get hurt and apologized. She was also given a collar that sealed her powers and Eddie began to beat her up. Since then, she has been used as a punching bag and Rain was shocked after learning about Nina's story. Then Rain planned to free her from the collar and he tried to calm her down. Suddenly Nina told him that there is a dangerous spell on the collar, but Rain said he will save her. Rain tried to use his beast tamer skills, but he was unable to nullify the spell. Nina said he had done enough for her and wanted him to stop. She said that she is worthless and that no one would be sad if she would die. But Rain wanted to save Nina at all costs, and he didn't give up. As a result, he managed to free Nina from the collar, and Nina was glad that he didn't die. In the meantime, Tanya and Canada defeated Eddie's guards, and Tanya was bored. Suddenly the enemies planned to use their hostages as shield, but they were attacked by Runa and Sora. They were able to free the prisoners and said that they were teleported to a safe location. So Tanya and Canada began to fight the remaining guards. Then we see Eddie, and he told his father that he should escape without him because he still has something to do. A few moments later, we see Rain meeting his friends in the building. They were surprised to meet Nina, and they teased him a little bit. Then Tanya said that they had already been informed about it, and Nina was nervous. Following this, Canada tried to calm her down, and she couldn't stop cuddling Nina. Meanwhile, Rain told Stella that their mission is not over yet and they need to be careful. Suddenly, the Lord of Horizon appeared and Stella was about to arrest him. Rain used his gauntlet to capture him. Then Eddie appeared and he activated the cursed item to summon a Reaper. Rain was attacked and Canada failed to save him. Meanwhile, Alios was happy because he thought Rain died. Rain was unharmed, but his girls were worried about him because they thought he was dying. Following this, it was explained to Rain that the Death Scythe magic is an instant death spell. Suddenly Runa wanted to test something and she cast a deadly poison spell on Rain. Runa explained her suspicions that Rain got an ability that nullifies status effects. Then Runa was scolded for casting a poison spell on Rain. Eddie was shocked that he lost against Rain and he became angry. Suddenly the cursed item spoke to him and Eddie was absorbed. Rain spent too much time watching One Piece and he turned into Portgas Dias. As a result he attacked Eddie with a powerful fireball. Unfortunately, his attack doesn't work and Eddie was covered in black slime. Suddenly a demon named Blackbeard appeared and Rain froze in fear. At that moment Rain remembered that a demon had destroyed his village. Rain became angry and he knew he had to stop the evil demon from destroying Horizon. Demon Blackbeard said he felt like killing them all, but flew off to destroy the town Horizon. Rain suspected that his real target was all the people of the city, 
but he didn't want to put his friends in danger. Then he noticed that his girls wanted to support him in the fight against the demon Blackbeard. Nina wanted to go with them, but Rain said she didn't have to fight. Rain promised that he will return, and he went hunting the demon. Meanwhile, Demon Blackbeard attacked Horizon with powerful magic. Suddenly, Rain and his friends appeared and wanted to stop him. He just laughed and was excited to play with them. Canada began attacking him, and they combined their attacks against Blackbeard. Unfortunately, he was able to free himself with ease, but the twins attacked him with a thunderbolt spell. Following this, Rain's group wondered if he was defeated, but he was unharmed. Blackbeard looked down at them and said that he is a top G. He used his devil fruit and he summoned demon dogs. However, Canada started the fight and Rain's girls were able to eliminate Blackbeard's pets. Blackbeard summoned more demons and he began attacking Canada. She was injured and Tanya attacked with a strong fire breath. So Tanya tried to stop the enemy and Rain managed to heal Canada. Unfortunately, Blackbeard was stronger than Tanya and he managed to overwhelm Tanya with his power. Tanya was unharmed and Rain was glad that nothing happened to her. Blackbeard had a lot of fun fighting Rain and he started casting a spell. As a result, the city was destroyed and Rain was angry at the enemy. He attacked Blackbeard with fire magic to distract him. He then activated his multi-boost spell to unleash Tanya and Canada's true powers. So they started to launch their counterattack against the demon, and together they were able to stomp him into the ground. Suddenly, Rain realized that they didn't deal any damage on the enemy. Blackbeard smiled, and he used his devil fruit powers to summon an army of demon pets. Then he flew away, and Rain said that he planned to destroy Horizon. Tanya tried to stop him, but he used his pets as a shield. Rain planned to go after Demon Blackbeard, but he also wanted to protect the citizens. Suddenly, Runa and Sora told him about their magic that they can teleport the residents to a safe place. They said they wanted to save the city together with Rain, and he relied on his girls. Then we see the heroes' party and Mina wanted to fight the demons, but Alios refused and said that they only have to concentrate on fighting the demon king. Then we see Stella's group, and she tried to evacuate the citizens. She encouraged her soldiers and said that they must protect the city at all costs. After that, Runa and Sora showed up, and they told Stella about their plan. Nina was worried, and the twins tried to cheer Nina up. Meanwhile, Rain's group fought against many monsters, and they were able to protect many residents of Horizon. They told them to find a safe place, but more and more demons appeared. A short time later, Sora and Runa wanted to teleport the residents to another location, but they didn't trust them. Suddenly, the hot dog seller showed up, and he said he trusts them. After that, more residents showed up, and they managed to convince the other residents to trust fairies. Before they could teleport all the residents away, a group of demons appeared. Unfortunately, the demons didn't stop spawning, but Rain got support from the Adventurers of Horizon. The reason for this was that Natalie asked everyone to help Rain's party in the fight. Gantz brought them weapons, and the Adventurers all wanted to support Rain in the fight, so they created a path for Rain's party, and he was grateful for the help. We then see Runa and Sora, who teleported the residents to a safe place. Nina saw everyone doing their best to save the city, and she decided to help in the fight. Then Rain said that he has a plan, but he needs to get closer to Blackbeard. Tanya explained that she can't use her dragon wings because the demon pets are blocking the path. Suddenly Nina appeared, and she said that she wanted to support him in the fight. Canada and Tanya remembered that demigods have a special skill. However, Rain left his two girls to defeat the pets, and he went with Nina to stop Blackbeard. Blackbeard attacked him, and Rain dodged all attacks. Suddenly Rain was attacked with a powerful laser beam, but Nina activated a lightning speed spell. As a result, Rain was able to get close to Blackbeard, and he activated his boost spell on himself. Blackbeard tried to attack Rain with his pets, but Rain tried to seal him. He absorbed the evil power into his body and took control of his pets. Unfortunately, the evil power of the demons was very dangerous, but Rain tried to resist. As a result, Rain was able to stop the demons from attacking and Blackbeard was shocked. Demon Blackbeard didn't want to lose but Rain ordered his pets to attack him. In the end, the demons exploded and Blackbeard was defeated by Rain's beast tamer skills. Nina had no strength left, but Tanya managed to save them in time. Rain saves the city of Horizon with his friends, and they watch the sunrise together. In the following days, Horizon was rebuilt, and Stella was able to arrest the corrupt knights. Canada and Tanya helped rebuild the city. Meanwhile, Rain was admiring his girls, and he still thought he was a normal beast tamer, but his girls said he's definitely not a normal beast tamer. 
A few days later we see Nina, who told Rain that she would like to stay with him. Rain wasn't sure if he could make another pact with an ultimate species, but he was determined to fulfill Nina's wish. He used his powerful beast tamer skills and created a pact with Nina. Nina accepted the familiar pact with Rain and officially became a member of his family. After that, the contract was sealed and the girls were happy to have a new family member. Later, Rain visited the Adventurer's Guild and he was surprised to see Stella. Natalie told them that they have been discussing a collaboration of sorts. She became the new captain of the Knight's Order and she thanked Rain and his friends because without them, Horizon would have been destroyed. A few moments later, Rain learned that he had been promoted to a C-rank adventurer. Rain was surprised and learned that he was promoted because of defeating a demon. Additionally, Natalie told him that he can expect significant compensation as well. Then Natalie was introduced to his new party member and found Nina really cute. Suddenly she realized that she is a demigod, and she learned that Nina is also very kind. Later Rain said that their room's way too small for a six-member party. Natalie suggested that they should buy a house that had enough space for Rain's party. The girls liked the idea, and Rain decided to buy a house. So Rain spent his day looking at houses with his girls. A few hours later, Natalie wanted to show them the final property. This house was perfect, but Tanya wondered why Natalie had shown the house last. Then Natalie told them, the house is haunted, and they learned that Canada can't stand ghosts. While Nina tried to calm Canada down, Natalie said that the ghost was always playing pranks. Canada was terrified, but other girls didn't think the pranks were that bad. Afterwards, Rain said that they will check out the house and see what they can do about it. Natalie didn't plan on accompanying them and wished him good luck in the haunted house. A few moments later, they entered the house and Rain looked around with his girls. Once they were in the living room, the furniture began to move. Canada panicked, and Rain thought he was in the movie Paranormal Activity. At that moment, a ghost appeared in front of them, and she told them to leave. The twins planned to wipe out the spirit with a powerful spell. Unfortunately, their attempt failed, and the ghost managed to dodge the astral attack. The two girls planned to use an even stronger astral magic, and the ghost girl knew she was screwed up. Tanya noticed that this spirit can't attack them. Then she decided to scare Canada because she was the only one who was afraid of her. Suddenly, Canada's fear reached its limit, and she managed to harm a ghost with physical attacks. Then Luna and Sora activated a barrier spell so that the ghost girl couldn't escape the room. Tanya took care of Canada, and she regained her senses. Suddenly Rain stopped her, and he revealed that he learned how to tame phantoms. Rain showed that she no longer had control over her body, and she gave up. After that, he introduced himself to her, and she started to like him. Following this, Tina introduced herself, and they learned that she died 30 years ago. Tanya asked how she died, and she said that the owner of this mansion murdered her. Suddenly Rain asked if Canada was still afraid of Tina. She said that she can try to get along with her. Rain's girls knew what Rain was up to, and smiled. Afterwards, Rain asked Tina if she would like to live here with his party. Tina was surprised by his offer, and the girls explained to her that Rain always does things like that. Rain said that he looks forward to live with her in this mansion, and she thanked him. A few days later, the contract was officially established. Then Canada told Natalie about Tina, and that they are preparing a housewarming party. Natalie was happy for Rain, and he realized that Horizon was now his home. In the evening, the hero party demands free provisions from a vegetable seller. He replied that he don't have any goods to spare with them. Alios became angry, and he said that it is his duty to help his party. The man remained stubborn, and he wasn't the only one who didn't want to give Alios provisions. He was angry and destroyed the vegetable seller's Demon. stall. Then Alios left the place, and the residents said that they don't need a hero because they have rain. Meanwhile, rain had received many gifts from the residents, and Canada said to him, Welcome home. A few hours later, dinner was prepared, and they learned that Sora cooked most of the food. Canada and Tanya were looking forward to dig in. Suddenly, Nina thanked Rain because she is no longer alone. At that moment, he remembered losing his home as a child. He was happy to have found a new home and to have met the girls who make him happy. Then he realized that the hole in his heart wasn't empty anymore. Suddenly, he started crying tears of joy and he was surprised by it. His girls were worried and he said they should start eating before dinner got cold.